This is the cart I'm using in conjunction with my spiking tensioning station. Uh, small shells I can just hold in my hands and sit in a chair like I was doing in the other video and spike them. But for larger shells like this second break of an 11 timed 8 inch shell, especially when this gets married to the first break, it's very unwieldy and I've got a bad elbow um, that really is sensitive to that kind of abuse, really hossing this around and around and around. So I made this this cart, uh, I've actually bolted the cart to the floor so the cart itself is stationary. This platform rolls on a Lazy Susan um, piece of hardware I got at Home Depot just for a Lazy Susan cabinet kind of thing. Um, and I've also included, I uh, can't see it on that side, uh, around the Lazy Susan I have put some 3 8 inch thick pads, um, nylon pads you put on the bottom of chair legs to keep them from marring a floor. That keeps this platform uh, pretty steady on the Lazy Susan. So the platform can go round and round and I've got a couple conveyor rollers. These are 1 and 7 8 inch conveyor rollers, 21 inches long. That So the, the whole shell can be rolled and spun as I'm working on it without me having to hold the weight of the shell in my arms. So I'm going to put 32 verticals spiking on this uh, second break of an 8 inch 11 timed shell and I'll show how I do that. I'm still getting used to the uh, cart so it's still a little unwieldy for me. It's going to take a little more uh, practice to get used to it, but I'll show you the essential, what I have in mind. I'm going to adjust the tension so this is pulling pretty hard through the tensioning unit. So I like to put a little bead of glue around the base of the split when I start my spiking. With this Rin Fasciture method, you want to seal around the spillet as often as possible with each step to prevent fire from ever getting in that place. Really pull that clove hitch good and tight. clove hitch down around the base of the split to help seal that area really well. And then I have put hash marks, 32 hash marks top and bottom to facilitate me using this um, off-center spiking method. And once I get this started The I can really keep tension on the shell as I'm going round and round with it. This is a standard 32 verticals spiking pattern that I'm applying. The spiking with all this tension is really biting into the ends of the shell. And I can, I can basically let go of the shell and take a little break if I need to. But I like how this is facilitating this, which in the past has seemed like pretty hard work doing this. This really makes this easier on my arm.
like I said, when, when I get to working on the uh, fully assembled shell, which is a 28 pound shell, almost two feet long, this really makes that a whole lot easier on my body. I have found that when a little glue actually gets on the rollers, it keeps the shell from sliding as much. So one trick I may do in the future is actually smear a little glue on the rollers before I even start spiking. I'm close to having the verticals pattern done. That is complete on top. That is complete on the bottom. So now I want to come across to a place and then come down. start my horizontals. In this particular spiking application I'm looking for applying small squares. And this string is really tension. It's really pulling this shell together. See if I let go of the shell, it tries to spring back.
setting the angle on the turntable sort of gets the string spiraling up the shell in the correct spacing and on the correct angle. Still work, but it's uh, easier on my elbow, easier on my arms in general. And I'm feeling like I can, t I can take a little break when I need to. So for me so far the system is uh, working as I hoped it would. So that gives you an idea of what I'm doing with this uh, cart. So there is a completed 8 inch spiking